Now, if we think about it, in, in reinforced concrete, it is usually the surfaces which uh, need to be reinforced with steel. So this is a slab, and there's a top surface of the slab, and there's a bottom surface of the slab as well. It's got three holes in it right now, and this is not a very uh, difficult slab. Uh, but the point uh, is that when we think of the top surface, for example, we see that uh, many different uh, positions, part marks or re uh, rebar marks. Uh, so, for example, if we were to take this direction, we will uh, have a rebar over here in this region. Then we will have a rebar in this region, another one in this region, then another one over here. Then there will be another one like that. Uh, and then another one in this region and uh, region. So basically going from left to right, there will probably be about, about 10, 12 different uh, marks. Now the commands which I've shown you, like sectional reinforcement or direct bar entry and uh, things like that, you will need to create uh, each bar. So for you need to create, for example, this bar by taking a cross section over there, then one over here, then another one over here. So you'll, you will need to do that uh, sectional reinforcement command uh, maybe 10 12 times to arrive at so a solution for the for the y direction of this uh, top surface now the same it is true for the x direction you will have a rebar along this line then one between this area then another one between this area one at the back and so it's uh, it's it's going to be a little time consuming but what if I showed you a command which would take the entire surface into consideration and all the holes in it in consi into consideration and find all the possible uh, areas where uh, reinforcement needs to be placed and actually place that. So let's go to the surface reinforcement macro and uh, we select the slab, we right click and then we right click again so that we don't want to select, it, select any other elements and I'll talk about that in a second, but it then asks you for a surface. So you can select the top surface or you can press control to press the bottom surface or you can select the side surfaces, basically any surface you can select. So let's select the top surface over here. It then asks for a direction of the bar. Uh, so let's give it the X direction first uh, as the main direction. When I do that, immediately on the screen, you have this uh, beautiful result. Now, the, um, the good thing about the way it has placed these rebars is that if you notice, it started off with a clear cover from over here. It's gone on, but then it has uh, realized that there's a hole over there. And so one bar needs to be placed just before that at a distance at, of the clear cover from that edge of the hole. And then from the other side, when the, where the hole finishes, once again, a rebar is uh, needed at, the clear, uh, at a distance of one clear cover from that point. And similarly, when you get to the end, the same thing is there. And then for the other region, it, it hasn't started immediately over here because there's no need and there's a there's a, a spacing distance between the two. And once again, over here, we see that the, the um, clear cover has been maintained as well as over here uh, and over here and everywhere. So this is important because what normally programs do is they will start off with a clear cover and then just put equally some uh, spacing wherever wherever they may go. So it'll start from here and end over here. The first and the last bars will be okay. But this bar might not be at exact clear cover, but it might be somewhere over here. And this bar might be maybe somewhere over here and there could be no bar with a clear cover. So what the user then needs to do is, uh, he needs to go and individually check each and every one of these and uh, make slight modifications in their ranges so that to, uh, to ensure that the clear cover is maintained around uh, all the holes. But in Comosis, uh, what the surface macro does is it, it, it sorts that out for you very conveniently. Another advantage of the surface macro is that while it, it places all these uh, dozens of uh, different uh, rebar marks in one go, you still maintain individual control over each and every one of them. So for example, each one of them is actually a separate, if I press M and enter, you have separate control over each one of them. So what you can do, for example, is you can change uh, the spacing of only this particular part uh, and the spacing will be modified. Another thing you can do is you can change the end conditions, for example. So you can go in there and say, I don't want the embedment at the starting point. So when you do that, the embedment is released. So while you're doing the entire thing in one go, you still maintain individual control over all, all the individual uh, rebar positions.
another uh, huge advantage of the surface macro is that uh, like a while ago i just placed the rebars in the in this direction but you can ask the surface macro to uh, place the rebars both in the x and y directions so let me do that and select the top surface and give it the main direction so this is the main direction and the moment i do that the rebars are placed in both the main as well as the secondary directions. It finds the secondary direction automatically perpendicular to the main direction. But now you have dozens of rebars, each separate. So there's uh, ones in the y direction, ones in the x direction, and you have complete control over each individual uh, one over there. This really facilitates your work. And if I want, I can immediately go back and uh, reapply it to the to the bottom surface as well, for example. So I can select the bottom surface and tell it that my uh, main direction is uh, still the same like this one and now my bottom rebars are also placed in a single go so I, in a few clicks i have managed to create maybe a hundred different part positions which are all uh, properly placed according to the clear covers ar around the holes and i can then even modify them further if i wanted Sometimes when there is congestion or uh, embedment is different, uh, is difficult for whatever reasons, we use mechanical couplers uh, to do the same job. And in Commosis, it's extremely easy to put couplers at the ends of rebar. So all you need to do is just select the end of the rebar and the coupler will be created according to the, um, according to the manufacturer's standards. So uh, you, what you can do is you just select, like I said, the end and your couplers will be created. And it's not that you can only create circular couplers. Uh, what you, inside the, um, the macro, you have options to create rectangular ones, for example. So let's do that. Or what you also have the option is to actually uh, call a shape database in which you will be asked for a manufacturer and a family and, a, and the item, the particular coupler which you have in your standards. And you can all feed them into Commosis through the shape editor. And once you do that, they will be recalled and you will create uh, very complicated couplers as well, uh, as far as the geometry is concerned. Sometimes, once again, because of congestion, uh, we need to put two bars together as a bundle. So after having created your uh, surface um, uh, bars, what you can do is you can just go to convert a rebar to double rebars and just select on the bar and right click. And immediately each one of them will be bundled with another one of the same. And that's very convenient for to convenient to quickly do that. Another option is available to actually convert it into three bars. So you can what you can do is select the bar, right click, and now you've got three bundled together. Now, what the surface macro does for you is very intelligently and very quickly it finds all the regions on a surface and places the bars beautifully, uh, taking into consideration the clear covers at every hole. Uh, for you in, in with a few clicks but what it doesn't do for you is uh, is the fact that some of these bars may be longer than uh, for example 12 uh, meters so this one is 23.9 meters for example so these bars then need to be spliced after that and uh, you can do that with a multiple selection as well uh, but i'm just going to take you so all you do is basically you go to the splice uh, macro and you have your uh, splice operation rather we have the system of operations on top of surface macro, which even if the surface macro runs again, the operations are also modified every time you do that. So you can have your spacing input. So you can say to, uh, at every eight meters, I want to splice. You can uh, place extra bars. You can shift the bars. I mean, I'm not going to go into the details of this. This is very, it's very detailed and lots of ways of doing the splice over here. But all well, what I want to show you right now is you just uh, press the splice button and you can see all the different splice options over here but just press the splice button and you select this bar and you right click and you right click again and immediately according to your given uh, given dimensions of put a, put a splice at eight meters you can even stagger these if you want uh, and another one over there so your splices are created very conveniently and very easily uh, for you by this splice operation now let's say we had a little column like this coming out from the side of the slab so let's look at it from the top and we want to embed these bars, which are going inside the column, to, to actually go inside the column, but not these last two, because they're, they're outside the column. We could very easily do that with, with the surface macro. We're going to go to the range operations, say conform bar to a point, select this rebar, 
and then select a point which will be about one clear cover inside this column. So I just press this point and I say DY50. And when I do that, right click, immediately my this bar over here coming in is broken into two parts. One is what is left of it on, on the other side and one is uh, this one which is exactly at the clear cover uh, from the end of this column. Once we are okay with that, all we need to go, go is, uh, to do is to go to the path operations and say I want to embed my rebar into another object. So what we do is we select this rebar at the end, then we se select the, the end point, and then we show the two parts which need to be union. So I show it the slab, right click, the column, right click, and right click again, and immediately the bar is extended into, uh, into the column. Once again, I have full control over the embedment length. So in this case, the default was 30 feet. Uh, if I make it 50 feet and I press OK, you will see that the length, embedment length changes. So these changes are, these kinds of modifications uh, after having committed the surface macro are very quick and very easy to uh, do, as you can see on the screen. And it will really make your job as a detailer very easy. So coming back to the fundamental theme of this webinar, uh, which is that we don't want to be scared of concrete modeling or rebar modeling in 3D. We can do that with the modern technology which is available in, inside Comosis, and we can do that very easily, as you can see, uh, as I've been showing you for the last, uh, I don't know how many minutes. But the, the, the point is that uh, it, it is time to, uh, to take that big step. Uh, we we know that very few companies are into concrete and rebar 3D detailing. Very few, as compared, the steel sector is almost entirely uh, in, but the concrete sector uh, is is unfortunately lagging for many reasons. But the the excuses are no longer there. The visionaries among you will 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 notice that the excuses are no longer there, and it is time for them to step up their game and actually make uh, the decision forward.